On this episode of TLG Reacts, I will be discussing my impressions of the Call of Duty Vanguard beta, which I think is still taking place right now. I played it on PS5, and I got a lot of thoughts about it. But before I talk about that, I'm sure you guys might be wondering where I've been in the last week. To be vague with it, somebody in my household got a very uh, well-known virus that uh, is going around. And uh, they tested positive for that. So I've been quarantining for over a week now. But as of four days ago, I started getting symptoms. So uh, I've been dealing with that. Been doing a lot of sleeping, a lot of drinking water, and a lot of vitamin taking. Um, in case you're curious, uh, I am feeling pretty good. But definitely uh, have some lethargy going on, some sensitive skin and cold and hot sensations going on a lot. Uh, other than that, though, everything's pretty mild. Um, so that's good. Um, everybody else in my household um, is doing good. So in case you're curious, but that's where I've been. And uh, I know you guys will understand. It just kind of sucks because we're doing the uh, community pick game of the month this uh, this month. And this happens. So I'm like, that's that's great fucking timing. So yeah, I've been doing a lot of uh, doing a lot of sleeping lately, just trying to get through this. Um, it's been working, like I said, four days in, and I'm feeling good enough to be here talking. So uh, I think the first day was probably the worst. I had a fever for an hour one night with a really bad headache, and after that fever broke and the headache went away, it's been really mild symptoms like slight stuffy nose. I had a sore throat for a second. But mostly just the sensitive skin and, and being hot and cold a lot. That's the thing that sucks. But other than that, it's whatever. So, um, yeah. Uh, doing fine, though, as of right now. But, yeah, the show must go on. And so um, hopefully you guys are all doing well. And uh, you're you're taking care of yourselves, doing what you need to do, and uh, being responsible out there during these trying times but enough about that you guys know the drill make sure to download and play hitman 2 predator hunting grounds and overcooked all you can eat all offer for free on playstation plus make sure to download those play those come back this weekend for plus club this this month's kind of weird because the last weekend of the month is i believe this weekend um but then there's almost like a whole last week after that. So we're going to do Plus Club this weekend, and then we're going to do Game of the Month, I think, on Thursday of next week. So uh, make sure to play Valheim, which is our Game of the Month. Uh, play that, come back uh, at the end of the month for Game of the Month, and we will be revealing your guys' pick for the community pick game of the month. Thank you everybody who is participating in that this year. How you can do that if you want to participate in that is every episode in September. And I'm going to try and get some episodes out before that happens. So you guys have more chances to vote. Uh, every episode in September, anything that's been released in September, you can vote once. Unless the video somewhere in it tells you there's a way to get more points, uh, which look out for that. Uh, but you vote once per video, and then we tally up all the votes throughout the videos in September. We find the most voted ones. We put them in a random number generator, and we find out the winner and the two runner-ups. Two runner-ups go on to our list uh, for future Game of the Month episodes. So think about uh, possibly playing it next month if you win or maybe something worth playing in the future as well and uh yeah runner-ups will go on that list and then the winner will be played in october um so yeah think about what game you'd like us to play and what game you'd like us to review and what game possibly would want to play with us in october and we will find that out on game of the month next week like thursday ish but plus clubs happening this weekend and we're going to try and get a taste of cast out before then as well because we missed that last week because of the things i talked about already we have discord uh discord uh we we, yeah, we stream and we have social media stuff all linked down below and uh patreon if you want to support this channel more than liking commenting sharing and subscribing for brand new all right let's talk about call of duty vanguard So I got around to playing Call of Duty Vanguard, Sledgehammer's second World War II outing. Uh, oddly enough, they made World War II, and then they were making Cold War, and then they got pulled off that, and then Treyarch started working on that, and then they got put on this, and now Treyarch's making the zombies for it. It's, it's, it's all fucked up. Um, 
But yeah, uh, I played it, and uh, long story short, I'm going to go into a lot of details, but uh, I left feeling pretty mad about it, which, uh, which kind of sucks. It's really interesting to have watched COD kind of stagnate for a while there, and then they made Modern Warfare 2019, which I think like really revitalized everything. For me, it felt like it was like coming back. Um, it was really exciting. It was the most exciting thing in COD for a long time. Uh, it, it got more gritty again. It was more cinematic again. The gameplay felt a little slower, a little more tactical, which was cool. The mounting system, I loved. Uh, them trying to add new gameplay to it was very welcome. The tactical sprint was very cool. And a lot of that comes back in this, which I definitely uh, am happy about. But with all that momentum... Uh, in Modern Warfare 2019, it got lost with Cold War. Cold War came out and it it felt horrible. It felt like an unfinished game, which is understandable. Like I said, it's it was made by two different developers and Treyarch essentially was playing cleanup. So anyway, that game really kind of dampened the momentum that Modern Warfare 2019 uh, put into place. And then we get this game, and even though I do think it's an improvement on Cold War and definitely an improvement on World War II, it still feels like it's not focused. It feels like they they are going, let's make the setting World War II, but let's make it feel like a more modern Call of Duty with the amount of attachments we're going to put in the game that just didn't exist during World War II. And it feels like they're just trying to make something that will be more acceptable than Cold War. And I can respect that, but also I feel like this game doesn't really have a place. So I took some notes on what I like and dislike about Vanguard. And I'm going to go through those just to kind of add some order to this. So the first note I got is the, the TTK. I think it's good. I know this is kind of a mixed bag for people. I think some people like uh, a more robust TTK. Uh, I'm not talking Halo level, but, you know, something where you can get shot a couple times and you can react to it. In case you don't know, TTK means time to kill. The amount of bullets it takes to kill somebody in a game. This fluctuates in every FPS ever, every Call of Duty ever. Um, I come from a more like tactical shooter background, so I like that whole Arma, Arma 2, Arma 3, you get shot once, you're dead situation, or maybe you got grazed and you survive that shot, but the next one you're not gonna. I love that shit. It makes me play more focused. It adds more tension to the situation. Um, and though I don't think Call of Duty needs to be that, I do prefer um, you know, firing a couple shots and someone dropping them. That's why I typically play hardcore in Call of Duty. And Modern Warfare 2019 had a great TTK as well um, that some people didn't like. I did. Um, I didn't even have to play hardcore on, on Modern Warfare 2019, so that's cool. So I do like the TTK. I know some people aren't going to like it. I've already watched some videos. People are complaining about it, saying that it, you just get dropped too quickly. Uh, in that sense, I think you need to kind of recalibrate how you're playing and maybe slow it down a bit, um, stop doing the Call of Duty run and gun thing, uh, which, uh, you know, some people's play style, but you got to adapt to the situations. Uh, I did see plenty of people run and gunning in the game still, so you got to pick your battles. If you're indoors, do that. If you're not, uh, you know, take your time, I guess. But I, I like the TTK. I think it's good. Tactical sprint and mounting are back. I'm very happy about this as well. I felt like it was a huge back step uh, with Cold War not having that. But at the same time, I like the idea of having multiple Call of Duties that all feel different. Because if we're going to get... A Call of Duty every year by different developers. They should all have their own like signature feeling to them. And I do like that uh, that Infinity Ward, who I thought for a long time was making the worst Call of Duties, which sucks because they made the best ones back in the day. Uh, they're making the worst ones. And so uh, they came back in Modern Warfare 2, or 2, 2019, and uh, it, it felt like its own thing. They It felt like they made their own Call of Duty. And then Treyarch was like, well, we're going to take it back to like the crazier run and gun, dual wielding, get crazy, jumping around, Call of Duty. And as much as I'm not as big of a fan of that, I liked that they were doing their own thing as well. I kind of like everyone's kind of doing that. Maybe somebody's working on the more sci-fi ones. Maybe somebody's working on the modern warfare. Maybe someone's working on the more historical ones. Where's a Vietnam Call of Duty? I don't know. And with the return of mounting and tactical sprinting, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm, I really enjoy those... Uh, gameplay elements of Modern Warfare 2019 and was hoping to see those come back. Um, 
and they're here and I'm, I'm stoked about it. But at the same time, like I said before, if we're gonna have the different Call of Duties and have their own signature feels, this doesn't really add much to that outside of offering a World War II experience that feels skewed, feels not authentic. Even though they haven't claimed that it that it is an authentic experience, it feels off running around uh, in these World War II maps with uh, with all these weapons that have these weird attachments that don't don't really fit the time era, I guess. But anyway, long story short, I'm kind of ranting there. Uh, I, I'm I'm happy for gameplay that uh, for gameplay sake that the tactical sprint and mounting are back. I think those are really cool. Even though I've seen a lot of people complain about the mounting uh, being good for campers or whatever, um, I I honestly don't care about people camping or not. Most time when someone camps, you get killed by them once and then you just go find them and kill them because now you know where they're going to be. Um, so I've always kind of thought about it, even back to like the quake days where people would just sit in a corner with a rocket launcher and like real camping. Um, you learn your lesson, you go kill them. Uh, but yeah, the, the mounting allows you to have minimal recoil. So I get where they're coming from in that regard. But um, yeah, just flank them and take them out. Uh, I think it's cool though. I The way I play, I typically am kind of run and gun. And then like if there's a situation where a bunch of dudes are running in a door, I'll mount up and just unload on them. So I like having those options. More options is more ways to play, which I think is beneficial and better for the whole experience. Um, okay, so uh, I think the maps are better than World War II. Um, that's an improvement. One thing I think that Sledgehammer um, really lacks is um i guess sold to their games uh i think their their campaigns are hollow uh they're just kind of there and i think their multiplayer uh though it works and there's plenty of things to unlock um, a lot of imagination i think their maps not visually but the way they're laid out are not interesting i think they make very generic basic maps i think treyarch's fantastic at map design so uh as a contrast um, I think uh, Infinity Ward's gotten better at it, but for a while there, they also were making shit maps. Um, so anyway, World War II, the maps weren't good, but also the guns all felt like laser accurate, no recoil, just kind of whatever. So moving into this game, the maps feel a lot better. I think they're they're good looking. They they uh, are very detailed. I think the layout is a lot better on most of them. Um, the lanes are more interesting and there's just a lot more going on, which I can really appreciate. Uh, so yeah, definitely better than World War II and I think better than Cold War, even though some of the maps in Cold War are pretty cool. I just don't like the game. Um, there's a mode called Patrol. This might have been in a prior Call of Duty. I don't remember it. Um, where there's essentially... Um, a point you have to capture, but the point is constantly moving around the map. And not like other games where it's a point that is static and then it teleports to a new spot and you gotta take it there, take it there, take it there. It's literally just moving in like a, a patrol around the map. So you're running with it, trying to keep it while everybody's fighting for it. And I think it's actually a lot of fun. Um, I thought at first, I'm like, eh, that's not that different than what they've done before. But in practice, I think it's it's pretty cool. It, it feels good to like have to walk around the map and explore all the nooks and crannies of it and have to adapt in different situations because the point you're trying to take if you're playing uh you know the objective which you should be a lot of people are just playing deathmatch when i was playing um it uh it 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 just kind of has this dynamic element to it that makes it always feel like it's changing and it's moving slow so you got to kind of keep pace with it um and it's always evolving. And I think it's a really cool mode that I'd like to explore more. Uh, let's see. Guns feel decent. Uh, it's not really a pro or a con. I think they're fine. I think they feel better than World War II. The reason I'm uh, comparing them is because they made World War II. Uh, they have that Modern Warfare 2019 um, trying to be that game grit to it. Um, they're not as punchy. They got a good mid ground between that laser focused uh, minimal recoil that a lot of Call of Duties were doing there for a while and Modern Warfare 2019, which had that more punchy, uh, harder recoil that I enjoyed more because it slows down the combat a bit uh, compared to prior Call of Duty. So it's, it's good. It feels better than Cold War to me. 
and um, it's a step in the right direction. I also have GFX. Graphics are good. Um, they're not as amazing as people were saying, in my opinion. I've only played the multiplayer I was playing on PS5, but I remember before this came out, people, before they even showed the game off, people were saying they had seen it behind closed doors, and it might have been like a hype campaign, but they were saying, like, this is one of the best-looking next-gen games they've ever seen, blah, 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 fire, lighting, all this shit was amazing. And I haven't seen the single player, which I'm sure will be the showcase of the graphics even more than the, the multiplayer, because you got to you know turn that down a little bit for everything to run smooth with that many things going on. Um, but they're good. the The graphics are clean. Um, the The levels are detailed. The guns look great, um, but nothing amazing. So I don't know where people got that. It's like one of the best games ever. Um, I think people are just really hungry for next gen games that are blowing minds, and we're not going to get those. For a while so um it's still very early in this generation and uh any generation you look at the beginning and the end there's a huge difference in graphics so uh we are uh not there yet but the game's the game's fine looking it's good looking it, it looks like modern warfare 2019 um graphically probably a little better it's newer but it, it's good looking uh okay so not a fan of the attachments i've kind of mentioned this before it's a mixed bag for me on this because the immersion aspect of it i don't like it breaks it. Uh, having like uh, modern scopes on my Thompson submachine gun uh, just looks goofy and weird. And as somebody who's like really into uh, history and that history particularly, um, it's it's just kind of weird. It's like if people were running around the map with like you know leopard print uh, guns and people had like a clown uh wig and nose on and stuff like that it just, it just takes me out of it uh doesn't affect the gameplay well it does affect the gameplay that you have these options to put on your guns but i mean it doesn't negatively impact the gameplay um but it does take me out of it it's it seems goofy to me but on the opposite spectrum of that it's call of duty it's good to have things to unlock it's good to have things to work towards and more options is better in terms of gameplay. And I get why they did it. Because it gets tricky, it seems, with World War II games in what you can offer the players to unlock. Because there was less stuff back then to, to use compared to nowadays. You play like, I, I guess for instance, like Battlefield uh, 4 or something like that. There's so many fucking guns, so many attachments, all based off real life. And uh, it makes sense. But then you play, you know, well, I mean, Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 offered a lot of shit too, surprisingly for the time era. But a lot of that was kind of weird and goofy shit too. Anyway, long story short, the options are good. Um, it's going to help with the gameplay, but it doesn't feel like a World War II game. It feels like aesthetically it looks like World War II, but it feels like a modern uh, shooter. So... Yeah, mixed on that, it, that's not a negative or positive for me. It's just a, an interesting um, direction that I haven't seen them explain. So I don't know if they're just going like, eh, that's just how we're doing it. We want the game to be fun, and that's good enough for us, which I can respect, as long as they don't come out and go like, well, that's authentic, blah, blah, blah. You're an idiot if you say otherwise, like people have done before, DICE. Um, yeah, and then the last thing I want to talk about... Uh, is the sound design. Holy shit, this is the biggest thing I have a problem with. Um, the first thing I noticed playing this beta is it is completely fucking vacant of atmospheric sound. It is bizarre. There was a level I was playing, a map I was playing, where it was like raining and windy, and there was no rain sound effect, there's no wind sound effect. All you could hear is the faint footsteps of my character, which I'm, that's, I should be hearing that pretty well. And you could hear the footsteps of other people faintly. And then gunshots that don't sound that great. They sound better than World War II. And they sound better than Cold War, but they're not that great. And then the muffled shots in the distance that sound borderline muted. Uh, there's a lot of times I was getting shot by people 
And I wasn't even hearing the gunshots. I was hearing this weird bassy thump, 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 thump when I'm getting hit. It's like indicating the bullets are hitting me, which is a gameplay element that's appreciated that I know that they're making contact. I mean, I know I can see it's happening, but there was no other sound effect really going on. It's really fucking weird. Um, that's literally like the two sound effects you're hearing outside of people yelling every once in a while, too. It's people yelling and fucking some gunshots and footsteps. Which is really weird because I, I guess if it's like a, a, a smaller um, developer making this game, I could overlook it. But even then, I'd be kind of weirded out by it. But this is this is fucking Activision. This is goddamn Sledgehammer. They have an infinite budget. They have all the talent in the world, and they can't even add like air sound, no atmospheric sounds, no like wind no fucking rain sound you already put the visual details of the rain in the fucking map and you can't even have the sound for it hopefully they add that later because it was like really jarring um i have kind of an ear for that anyway I, I, not that you need an ear to not hear things but like i i focus on that shit and so i brought it up to some people i was playing with and then they started mentioning it multiple times They're like yeah this is weird i'm like yeah it's like fucking missing there's no sound it's every level is fucking silence like you're in space so hopefully hopefully they fix that that was like my biggest problem with the whole thing it's just how quiet it was and cold war was kind of like that too but not not this bad this is like unfinished sounding it's it's almost amateur um the sound you need to play the game all the things that indicate aren't even that pronounced they're not that punchy either so the sound design really needs some tweaking. Um, and I played it on two different uh, audio situations. I had uh, headphones on at one point. I was playing through my TV at another point just to kind of check. And both sounded awful. So this is something that needs to get fixed um, because it is not good. It's not good at all. Um, and yeah, it just it's, it's, it's honestly very surprising that it's this bad. Um, yeah, so all in all... I had minimal hype for Vanguard before playing it, and after playing it, it is better than I was expecting, but I was not expecting much. It's also not amazing either, and it's it feels like another stagnant entry into the series that is ruining the momentum of Modern Warfare 2019, which is really a shame to see. And it's interesting, because since this beta came out, They've been talking about that uh, Infinity Ward is probably working on a sequel to Modern Warfare uh, 2019, and everyone's talking about that. Everyone's excited about that. So are we getting to a point where we're just waiting for the Infinity Ward games, or are people in the other uh, CODs, the other developers, are they going to start bringing it as well? Because how cool would it be? That every year we get good Call of Duties, and not every three years we get a good one, and then we get some serviceable, passable fucking Call of Duties that, uh, you know, the yearly buyers are going to buy no matter what, um, which is me. I mean, I buy Call of Duty every year. I try not to buy Cold War, but fucking Josh convinced me to pick it up. God damn it. Um but yeah, are they just going to depend on them to be picking these up while they have, you know, the one all-star making a good Call of Duty? Hopefully not. I'd like to see them all make good ones, especially fucking Treyarch. I think Treyarch, when they when they are uh, not put in a situation where they're making Cold War, uh, they make the best fucking multiplayer. Uh, they, they had all the great ideas. They have great maps. They make fucking legendary maps. Um so I'm hoping to see a return to form from them. They also make the best zombies. They invented that shit. Um, yeah. So I'm just hoping for more from them because we're now two Call of Duties in. And honestly, I, I think we need better. I think we need better games. These are not uh, these are not exciting. I'm sitting here all year hyped for fucking Battlefield 2042. Like super excited for it, which is great because five, I just threw out the fucking win. I was like, fuck this game. So I'm excited to be excited for a new battlefield again and i remember back in the day you had call of duty and battlefield coming out and i bought them both but you'd be like oh shit i'm excited for both these games and this year i'm like guess i got time to fucking play battlefield because this game's not really getting me hyped um 
which sucks. I, I want to feel that uh, feeling of like, oh shit, dude, which one am I going to be playing more? Like they both look awesome and it doesn't seem to be the case this year. So hopefully when it comes out, it's better than this beta. It's a beta, I guess. Um, hopefully they do some balancing on the audio. Hopefully they do some work with the game. There are some positives there. There's some negatives. Um, I probably will pick it up um because it is better than cold war uh so far but uh my hype level is battlefield 2042 is coming out and i'm really excited for that by the way that got delayed and i'm 100 percent okay with that it seems like everybody is which is nice it's only a month but uh that was interesting because typically when delay happens people get really angry and everybody's like yeah we we support you blah 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 and i'm like man what a what a fucking contrast from battlefield 5 and the way they talk to the fans and now this and the way they're talking to fans and fans are fucking supportive who'd have thought um so anyway that's that's a good thing uh, if they need the extra time the extra month to uh get it all cleaned up and ready to go um we're all the better for it hopefully um yeah so uh vanguard it's looking all right I'm not super stoked on it but um probably gonna pick it up and play it let me know in the comments what you think of call of duty vanguard did you play the beta did you not play the beta um are you excited for it did you like it what things did you like about it what didn't you like about it what would you like to see them improve on did you notice the audio shit are you are you on the same page as me i watched a couple other videos and other people were talking about it too so that's good to see because I, I was like am i fucking crazy am i the only person noticing this shit um yeah, are you excited for the game though? Are you not excited? And uh, I'm excited for Battlefield. Um, and what are you hoping for when it comes to future Call of Duties? Are you happy with uh, Cold War? What do you want from Treyarch? Are you excited for a new Modern Warfare sequel? Let me know everything you're thinking about in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy this episode. Make sure to check out our other episodes. Uh, check us out on our streams and on our socials. Links down below. And yeah, we have a Patreon. If you want to support this channel more than liking, commenting, sharing this video, and subscribing if you're brand new. And we have Discord if you'd like to talk to us anytime all, all the time. Link down below as well. And uh all the podcast platforms we do audio as well and i think i'm going to put this out on audio as well so if you want to listen to that they're linked down below or on itunes and everything else so uh check that out uh, i apologize for this kind of uh discombobulated weird um video i feel kind of a brain fog so i'm sure you guys understand but uh hopefully you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned we got more episodes coming out this week hopefully um and stay tuned as well for Plus Club this weekend. Until then, I've been Seth, and have a good week, guys, and take it easy.